Here is a 2024 Toyota Crown Platinum in Oxford White. This is the two-tone, so you're gonna spend a little bit more, but this is also the faster variant with 104 horsepower more than the XLE and the limited trim. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides, and you're getting touches of Lexus in the front. So you get the quad LED headlights, daytime runnings that brush into the top part of the grill, Toyota badging on top, separating everything, I think, that it looks a little bit more athletic, especially because you have nearly six inches of clearance. The lower doesn't have anything that's functional, but we have the 360 degree reverse camera, front and rear parking sensors and bird's eye view. When you get into the limited or platinum, this is the only tiers that you can get the two tone. The platinum takes it up a little bit because underneath the hood houses the hybrid max 2.4 liter, four cylinder with a combined of 340 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque paired to a six-speed direct shift automatic transmission. All-wheel drive is going to be with the Platinum tier, including adaptive variable suspension, and you're achieving 29 MPGs for the city and 32 MPGs for the highway. Reaching 60 is almost two seconds faster than the XLE and the limited trim. Standard 19-inch wheels, we have the upgraded 21-inch, 10-spoke machine finish alloy wheels. Matte black is going to surround the fenders in the lower rocker, but we get the gloss black that's going to be on the door panels and between the chrome on the door handle. So I like the two-tone that pretty much goes all around the vehicle. We have the larger panel moonroof. It is a hatchback design, but it's not a true hatch. It is a sedan. So you're gonna lose a little bit of headroom, a little bit of cargo capacity. But when you're going for this variant, you're going for performance because you're going to be losing MPGs when you're looking for the hybrid trim. And this is also faster than the Toyota Camry TRD V6 that we've lost because all Camrys are now with the hybrid powertrain. And the rear of the crown gives the mask look for the LED tail lights. You get the grill pattern underneath it with the crown script. The lower doesn't receive any exhaust outlets, which for me is a con because this is the fastest variant that they offer. It's more of a fly underneath the radar image in which you wouldn't notice if this is the limited or the platinum tier because you can option the same features on both. Just the engine would be the more power variant. Quick release between the W and the N. So it's a win going into 15 cubic feet of storage. Underneath the floor, you receive the spare tire and you can split fold the rear bench in the back. And if you're tall, slide in, push it down. That's going to increase the cargo capacity to the crown. And one little trick, if you can't open the trunk, you go into the passenger side right over here, open up the glove box, and there's a little button right here that you push. Just push it on so that way it will open. Now we need to go inside, start up this hybrid max so you can hear that exhaust note. Ten-way power seat adjustment for the driver, eight-way power seat adjustment for the passenger, heated, ventilated, leather, memory for the driver. Headroom and leg room. The crown is going to sit up a little bit more so in the interior, feeling somewhat like a SUV and a sedan mixture. Upgraded JBL sound system, that's 11 speakers, comes into the limited in platinum trim, which includes a subwoofer. Two digital screens, both are 12.3 inches. Wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio. Throw it into reverse and we have the bird's eye view or a 360 degree reverse camera. You can change the different angles of the camera position and you can also take the lines off. To do the bird's eye view, just simply click on the view button right here and you'll go all around the vehicle. Click it again, and then you'll get the bubble effect that goes around it, and you can pause it. Dual climate control settings are standard. The ventilated seats come into the platinum trim, the driver focus setup, so it has the bar that wraps around, but it still makes it accessible to the QI wireless charger that is in the center. Area for the key fob, and here it is for the new crown. 
USB ports, the gear lever, and the gloss black elements that's going to surround it with driving mode select, which with this powertrain, I think you may use some of these amenities in which you have quite a bit. And because it's a fully digital gauge reader, you can change the configuration with a heated and leather wrapped three spoke steering wheel multifunction that includes a Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 with pre collision, pedestrian detection, blind spot monitoring, with rear cross traffic alert, front cross traffic alert lane, changing assist, traffic jam assist. And the armrest is going to be soft to touch. It opens up two ways with a USB and a tray, and it is pretty deep down inside. So, a his and her or driver and passenger sock. A large panel moonroof with a auto dimming rear view mirror and the door goes into the dashboard. It's gonna have your everyday materials up top, software it needs to be, one touch up and down for all of the windows and a medium sized storage pocket with a beverage holder carved out. For the back seats, headroom is good and it is carved out for you the way they have it set here, making the panel moonroof where it gives more visual light and it doesn't hurt with head room. Leg room is also good with storage behind both of the front seats, USB ports, air vents, cup holders in the center with an armrest. The door gets the heated mechanism. The door gets the heated seat switch buttons for the back seats because we're in the platinum tier, also optioned on the limited soft to touch. Everywhere else is gonna be more of your everyday materials, easy to clean off with a smaller storage, with a smaller storage pocket and a beverage holder carved out. Sliding into the center, the floor isn't completely flat. You will be sharing some feet space, but not a huge amount. The same thing with butt and shoulder space. You don't necessarily compromise only with headroom, you will start at six foot three. 340 horsepower, look at this. It's a lot faster. Sound deadening is great. You barely hear anything. And the engine doesn't have that drone sound like you'll get in the standard. When you're talking 104 horsepower more, and the curb weight is just a little bit under 4,340 pounds, put this into content. The Toyota Grand Highlander, same engine variant, has over 360 horsepower with nearly 5,000 pound curb weight. That's what I mean by you're getting a bang for your buck when you go to this variant, because you're getting the speed nearly two seconds faster than the XLE or limited trim. No CVT, you have the six speed. It's standard all wheel drive. And that variable suspension also makes the drive smoother when need and also more performance driven whenever you push the gas like this. I mean, you stay planted in the seat. It's ready to go. That's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros, when you get into the Hybrid Max or the Platinum tier, you're getting everything that you need, but then the con, it does go into right at $60,000, in which, should you option a Lexus? Now, the answer to that is you're gonna get a V6. You'll get the 3.5 liter, but no all-wheel drive will be standard. You can only get that when you go into the hybrid trim. So you're gonna spend more than $5,000 in order to get the more powerful variant in which this is already the most powerful variant that Toyota makes because the TRD is going to be discontinued for 2025 in which we don't have a V6 variant for the Camry. It's only going to be a hybrid trim option. The clearance is good which is a great pro because typically when you get these sedans and they look like a hatchback and this is a true sedan, you're gonna lose some headroom in the back and cargo, like I said, on the exterior. But going back to the question at hand, it feels like an SUV. I feel like I'm at seven to eight inches of clearance because of the way the seat sits. The con though is I'm sitting so high up, I feel like I'm on the headliner even though I'm not. I still got about two inches, give or take, and I'm at six foot three. The big problem that I have with the Toyota Crown though, is you have to option features in order to make it look as sporty as it is, which normally I say I like that we're getting options, and I do, 
But when you start considering 500 here, 1,000 there, this, that, you're gonna start thinking, maybe I should look at the Lexus variant in which I'll have more room in the back, a little bit more cargo, and it feels a little bit more open in the space for the front occupants. If I'm looking for that sport drive and it's hybrid, getting pretty decent MPGs, it's kind of the way to go. It's not gonna be like this Mustang 5.0 next to me, but I mean, it's gonna somewhat keep up with an EcoBoost. You have a smaller windscreen. When you're sitting at a stoplight, one thing that Toyota does correct is you're not going to have to go like this because the windscreen is tilted back enough so I can actually see what the light is instead of going like this because I'm tall. Brakes are gonna be the same in which, I don't think we need Brembo's, but I would like to see a larger brake because of this being a little bit more heavy and a little bit more performance driven. Turn radius at a stop point. It's a little bit longer, but it's not too bad. Two and a half lanes. You can hear the turbo spool up and then the hybrid clicking off. It's just kind of exciting what you get when you're considering it's still hybrid and you're getting nearly 30 mpgs on both realms now going to the rivals this is going to be a lot faster than the honda accord hybrid even if you go into the sport l it doesn't do anything except for aesthetics but you're going to get better mpgs there interior amenities for bang for your buck i feel like it's a bit of a discount considering you're getting Lexus components. You do get some Acura components when you go into Honda, meaning the buttons, but I'm not a huge fan because those buttons are really derived more out of Honda than Acura. They just kind of synchronize it in. As for comparing this to the XLE and limited trim, all of which I have reviewed, this is going to be the most composed ride. It's also going to have the best sound deadening. You get the JBL sound system, which you can option and you can get features similar to this in the limited trim, trim, but the XLE is going to be a little bit more base in the sense that you're getting 19 inch wheels and you don't get a lot of the amenities inside. Leather starts with the limited trim, but the Platinum just unlocks everything because if you're not looking for a CVT, you want that six speed automatic transmission, this is the way to go because you're getting that performance and you're still getting optimal MPGs. And as for Kia, they make a great vehicle also. I think that this is going to be a little bit more luxurious because of what they are going after in this segment. I am a little sad to see that we no longer get the Avalon and there isn't any V6 engine that's going to be optioned for 2025 models. But if you're looking at the fastest vehicle opposed to the Toyota Supra, this is kind of the way to go. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank Edel Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Crown Platinum for our car review.